Tacones. Brought to you by Taconis, the full aromatic pipe tobacco from Holland. Taconis is mild, rich tasting, and very satisfying. By Lincoln Mercury, where cars are built better to ride better at the sign of the cat. By Continental Insurance, the company that stands behind you and everything you own. And by Head & Shoulders, America's favorite shampoo. Hates your dandruff, loves your hair. Saturday, December the 30th, 1972, from the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, it's the 28th annual Gator Bowl Classic, featuring the University of Colorado Buffaloes versus the Tigers of Auburn. And high above the city of Jacksonville, Florida, is the Goodyear Blimp. And in the foreground, winding its way around the city of Jacksonville, the historic St. John's River. And here in the Gator Bowl itself, Fans from Auburn and Colorado have jammed their way in 72,000 strong to watch this first meeting in football history between these two schools. And on the field right now, the marching men of Colorado, the marching band of the University of Colorado, and we're getting ready for both teams to make their entry here onto the natural grass of the beautiful Gator Bowl. Hello, everybody. I'm Bill Fleming, along with Lee Groskup, welcoming you to this 28th annual Gator Bowl Classic. And we at ABC Sports are just delighted to be back with the Gator Bowl people, George Olson, Dick Stratton, and Ted Emery. You know, Lee, the last time we were here, it was a Big 8 team, Missouri, which defeated Alabama 35-10. to And Alabama, of course, from the Southeastern Conference. And strangely enough, that's exactly the situation we have today. Colorado from the Big 8 and the SEC represented by Auburn. And each of these squads this past year scored a giant upset in college football. Well, I had the privilege of covering one of those upsets, Colorado uh, beating Oklahoma earlier this year. They played inspired ball in that second half, one of the greatest games that I've ever had the privilege of announcing. And they did it behind their quarterback, Ken Johnson, who came out throwing the football in the second half, getting away from his game plan. And he had real good luck throwing to a couple of fine receivers, John Keyworth, who you see there on the left, he's the wingback, number 28, and J.B. Kane, number 89, the big tight end. Keyworth uh, is 6'4", 230. Kane is uh, 6'5", 6'6", maybe, uh, 232. And here's Keyworth. They did it with some play-action passes. Johnson scrambling to his right and looking downfield and finding Keyworth. And look at the height advantage here. There it is. Keyworth came to Colorado as a running back, and he has fine speed and agility after he catches the football. J.B. Kane was a basketball star in high school. He's at the top of your screen wearing number 89. Again, the play-action pass. Johnson drifting back to about 10 yards, and he finds J.B. Kane on the crossing pattern, which was one of his favorites in this contest. So those two men played a key role. Their running attack is headed by number 26, Charlie Davis, the tailback, who has rushed for over 2,500 yards in his two years at Colorado. He's an exciting runner, has 9'8 speed in the 100. And he's been very effective both as an outside runner, as you see here, against Oklahoma, and also on the tailback blast off of tackle. And that block, by the way, was thrown by Ozell Collier, who wears number 23, and you'll see him in action from the flanker wingback spot today. Their defense is headed by number 71, Bud Magrum, who is the uh, middle guard, and number 16, Cullen Bryant, All-American defensive back. Well, the Auburn Tigers were 9-1 and one on the season of 1972, and strangely enough, they were not even picked in the top 40 before the season got underway. So that's the reason that Shug Jordan, their coach, was an overwhelming choice for one of the Coach of the Year awards. One of the reasons that uh, Auburn was so tough was number 23, Terry Henley, a durable, strong running back who led the SEC in rushing. Terry is 6 feet tall, 190-pounder, comes from Oxford, Alabama. And despite the fact that he missed one game, he still had a scoring of 11 touchdowns during the 1972 season. Not too fancy. They uh, keep it nice and simple. Uh, very little finesse, and they like that play and also the blast. Now, two of the heroes in that Auburn, in the uh, Auburn-Alabama game, which Auburn won 17-16, David Langer and Bill Newton. And just in case you lost track of that game, this is what happened. In the last six minutes of play, this is Alabama punting. Now, Auburn blocks the punt. That was Bill Newton who blocked it. Langer races through, picks it up on the bounce, and goes in to score. At this point, it made the score 16 to 10. 
And then, just four minutes later, with less than two minutes to go in the contest, it was almost a videotape replay. But this, we assure you, was a different play. Same thing happened. Newton blocks. Langner picks it up. Goes in to score. That made the score 16-16. to And then the great kicking star of Auburn came in, coolly kicked the extra point with a minute and 34 seconds to go, and it made the score 17-16, to one of the astounding upsets during the season over the champions of the Southeastern Conference, Alabama's Crimson Tide. Well, as we come into this game, there are two key men who are going to be missing from action, from Auburn and from Colorado, one each. Well, quarterback Randy Walls will be missing from the Auburn offense, and that could be a tough assignment for Wade Watley because he didn't play a whole lot during the season. And a freak accident for Colorado. Uh, Steve Haggerty, the wide receiver, who's also their return man, uh, injured his ankle in practice. He's not going to be out long, but just long enough to miss this game. And that's too bad because he was kind of the answer to Johnny Rogers for Colorado. He'll be replaced, however, by Rick Elwood. And uh, that could be a, an interesting assignment for Rick Elwood. Strangely enough, Auburn is ranked sixth in the nation and Colorado 13th. And yet, Colorado is something like an 11-point favorite in this game. Now, it could be because of the fact that they're going with an inexperienced quarterback on the Auburn side. And while we have just a moment, let me mention to you that less than 28 hours from now, another great football game is coming up here on ABC, the Sugar Bowl Classic, for the first time ever on New Year's Eve. And Oklahoma, which was Auburn's opponent in the Sugar Bowl last year, will again be back in the Sugar Bowl this year, this time, however, on New Year's Eve against the pride of the East, Penn State. So we hope you'll join us here on ABC. That's at 8 o'clock Central Time, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, tomorrow night, New Year's Eve, and we promise you a, a great big New Year's Eve party in New Orleans. Well, one of the most favorite of all animals here is the alligator, and this particular alligator comes from ABC's scenic attractions at uh, Silver Springs, Florida, and he's here performing thanks to Ross Allen, his keeper, and he looks just a little bit on the uh, uptight side for this game today. <laughs> and now we'd like to introduce to you the defensive starters for both of these teams here today. First of all, on defense for Colorado. At left end for Colorado, number 83, a senior from San Bernardino, California, Rick Kay. At left tackle, number 85, a senior from Newport Beach, California, Stu Aldrich. At right tackle, number 73, a junior from Denver, Mark Cooney. At right end, number 64, a junior from Encino, California, Lenny Schufo. At linebacker, number 15, a junior from Greeley, Colorado, Randy Geis. At linebacker, number 51, a senior from Covina, California, Billy Drake. At linebacker, number 71, a junior from Reno, Nevada, Bud Magrum. At linebacker, number 37, sophomore from Denver, Rick Stern. Defensive halfback, number 16, a senior from Colorado Springs, Cullen Bryant. A defensive back, number 27, a senior from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, Lauren Richardson. And the safety man, number 12, a senior from Denver, John Stern. And the head football coach of the Golden Buffs, Eddie Crowder. And now for the Tigers of Auburn. On defense at left end, number 99, a senior from Columbus, Georgia, Eddie Welch. At left tackle, number 78, a junior from Bluntsville, Alabama, Benny Sibley. At right tackle, number 76, a junior from Fayette, Alabama, Bob Newton. Right end, number 93, a senior from Atmore, Alabama, Danny Sanscree. At linebacker, number 52, a junior from Memphis, Tennessee, Bill Luca. At linebacker, number 40, a senior from Birmingham, Alabama, Mike Neal. At linebacker, number 53, a sophomore from Gretna, Louisiana, Ken Burnage. Linebacker, number 56, a junior from Fayette, Alabama, Bill Newton. A cornerback, number 19, a senior from Huntsville, Alabama, Dave Beck. Cornerback, number 28, a junior from Birmingham, David Langner. Safety man, number 27, a senior from Childersburg, Alabama, Johnny Simmons. Tailback, number 23, senior from Oxford, Alabama, Terry Henley. And the head football coach, of the Auburn Tigers, Ralph Shook Jordan. So we're ready to go for the 1972 edition of the Gator Bowl here in Jacksonville, Florida. We'll be back with the opening kickoff between Colorado and Auburn in just a moment. 
America wakes up with Skin Bracer, no matter what the obstacles. Thanks, I needed that. Skin Bracer is the morning aftershave. Its skin tightener and chin chillers wake you up like a cold slap in the face. Even if it's your first shave. Thanks, I needed that. John's Manville fights pollution. Our floating fence rounds up oil spills. Our filter systems make sewage plants a lot sweeter and put a stop to dirty smokestacks. Fighting pollution. It's an element of today's Johns Manville you may have overlooked. We cut through this 8-inch log with each of these saws. And this is the winner, the Poland 25. How did Poland win? Because it's tough. Engineer tough. For a limited time, you can get a free carrying case with the purchase of any new Poland 25. The Poland 25, tough enough to stay a winner. Look in the yellow pages under saws for the participating dealer nearest you or call this toll-free number. At the center of the Gator Bowl here in Jacksonville, Florida, on a beautiful sunny afternoon, temperature 72 degrees, we have the co-captains of Auburn, Mike Neal, number 40, Mac Lorendo, number 72, and the tri-captains of Colorado, Cullen Bryant, 16, Chuck Mandel, number 61, and Rick Kay, number 83, meeting with the officials for today's game. The official uh, with them, referee Charles Bowen, the umpire is Rick Placeres, the linesman Joe Curtis, the field judge Chester Laney, the back judge Dick Pace, and it's the Golden Buffaloes who receive the football. At the north end to our left, Auburn's Tigers will kick off. So Oklahoma, or rather Colorado, defeater of this year of the Oklahoma team, will take the football first to begin this game. And I think you can get an idea of just exactly the enthusiasm that is being generated by this crowd. 72,000 strong, a crowd of more than 3,000 coming from Boulder for the Colorado Buffaloes. And the Auburn Tigers also have a great contingent here. And here is the starting lineup for the Colorado Golden Buffaloes. J.B. Kane, Greg Horton, Greg Carr, Bill McDonald, Chuck Mandel, Jake Zumbach, and Rick Elwood. He, in turn, is starting in place of Haggerty, who, as Lee Groskup told you, suffered an ankle sprain. In the backfield, Johnson Davis, Keyworth, and Matthew. Chris Wilson will do the kicking for the Auburn Tigers. Colorado, dressed in the gold pants, the gold helmets, the white jerseys, the black numerals, and the Auburn Tigers in the white pants and helmets, the navy blue jerseys, the burnt orange stripes on the side, and the white numerals. Now going back deep for the Golden Buffaloes is Ozell Collier, and he can fly the fastest man on the Colorado team. Standing in the end zone there, just in the outline of the Gator. After some rain showers early this morning, the sky is cleared. It's a balmy day. It's just ideal for football, and here we go. The first time that these two teams have ever met in football, and the game is just about ready to go. Auburn ranked sixth of the nation. Colorado, 13th. Auburn, 9-1. and one. Colorado, 8-3. and three. Short kick coming down to the five or six yard line. Ozell Collier back to the 15. And he's buckled, keeps going and goes to the 25 yard line. Chris Wilson, the man who kicked off down there, number 17, making the tackle and it's first and 10 for Colorado, a return of 19 yards on the play. Not only is this the first meeting between these two teams, but it's also the only time during the entire 72 season that a team from the Big 8 meets a team from the Southeastern Conference. And despite the fact that nine teams from both conferences are in bowl games, this is the only meeting. First and 10. This is Davis getting about three yards before he is upended on the far side of the field. Number 93. 
Danny Sandsbury. Charlie Davis, number 26, the tailback in a tailback-oriented offense, a play like we saw in our pregame show. Pitch left. Charlie Davis, who has rushed for over 2,500 yards in his first two seasons at Colorado. Second down, about seven yards to go. We've just gotten underway with the 28th annual Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. Johnson on the keep. Here's Davis, trapped. Nice defensive move by Bill Luca, number 52. And Dave Beck, number 19. Saw a loss on the play of about five yards. They say his progress was stopped at the 24-yard line. Give him a loss of four, making it third down, 11 yards to go. And there's no question about the fact that Auburn's defense is really fired for this game. There's no question that they can play defense. They've done it all year long, uh, surprising a lot of people. They have somewhat of a no-name defense. They just do it collectively. John Keyworth is split out wide to the left at the top of your picture. Just out of frame. On the draw, Charlie Davis. Knocked down by Danny Sandspree, number 93, an All-American end defensively, a senior. 231 pounders, forces the fourth down. And it'll be Colorado turning the ball over now to Auburn with John Stearns checking in the lineup. John averaging 39 yards per kick during the season. There's the stats on Charlie Davis for the year. Well, that's a pretty healthy average on rushing, too, isn't it? 4.6 average. John Stearns will kick it from about his 12 or 13. David Langner, number 28, is back in the single safety spot. Driving kick, fair catch called for by Johnny Simmons, number 27. 32-yard punt, no return. It'll be first and 10 on the 44-yard line. So we'll see what the Tigers of Auburn can do as we set the offense for you. On the 44, Auburn's Tigers have Wade Watley at quarterback. Terry Henley, number 23, the left halfback. The fullback is Rusty Fuller, number 33. And Tom Gossip, number 49, is the wingback. Straight ahead power with Henley. And boy, he is hit hard after he gets about a yard and a half. That was Stu Aldrich, number 85. Henley, hit by Aldrich. All the experts said that this was going to be a physical game, a hard defensive game. As a matter of fact, the cue to that might be that both coaches preferred to introduce their defensive lineups. They have so much pride in both. Good point. Second down and eighth, the ball on the 46-yard line. No score. We've just begun. Colorado had three chances, then punted. Now Auburn's turn in that slot eye. Watley keeps it. Goes into Colorado territory at the 42-yard line. Wade Watley subbing for the injured Randy Walls at quarterback. Picks up a first down into the Golden Buffalo territory at the 41 and a half yard line. Put down by Billy Drake, the linebacker. And this is the starting lineup in the front of the backfield, which we gave you. Cannon Norendo, Casey Taylor, Ferrier, Steele, and Spivey. Backed up by that backfield of Watley, Henley, Fuller, and Gossip. Cannon is wide, almost the full width of the field as the flanker back. Great defensive stop by number 73, Mark Cooney. 220-pounder from Denver. Loss on the play of about five to six yards. Back to the 46-and-a-half-yard line. Mark Cooney, the second leading tackler on the team with a total of 95, 33 solos and uh, 62 assists. This is the first appearance in the Gator Bowl for the team from Colorado. Auburn has been here four previous times, won two and lost two. Second down, 15. Watley drills it. He's got his man, Sandy Cannon. First down. Or very close to it at the 31 and a half yard line. Billy Drake and John Sturge made the stop. It may be close enough for the first down on the 29. Sandy Cannon, the split end all alone, running his favorite route, the curl end. And Watley right on target. Play action pass, 17 yards on the reception. A look from the end zone, and you see how the play action will momentarily freeze the linebackers. Watley has good time. He sets up, unloads. Two receivers <laughs> open in the slot that time. All right, back live. First and 10 on the 29 for Auburn's Tigers. Henley gets a couple. 
Billy Drake making the stop. Incidentally, Ed Butler, number 82, a, a freshman, has gone in the backfield for Auburn at wingback for Tom Gossam. Gossam uh, may have been shaken up. I see him sitting on the bench, number 49, and the trainer was attending to him. And we'll, uh, we'll see if he may have gotten shaken up on that last play that got the first down. The average of Henley, he's a real workhorse. A couple hundred carries and missed one game. Second and nine at the 29. Again, coming through quickly is Mark Cooney, number 73. The second time he's thrown Henley for a loss, and it makes it third down at about 13. Well, his progress actually was to the 30-yard line. Let's make it third down about 12. Colorado has a five-man look defensively, and their leading tackler on the team is number 71, Bud Magrum, who made some of the All-American teams this year. So Ed Butler now in place of Gossam at the wing. Cannon out wide to the right. Here's Watley. Slips. Cut back. But his knee touched as Magrum makes the final stop. His knee touched back on the 35. So it brings up a fourth down for the Tigers. And Gardner Jett, I believe, will be checking into the lineup. Well, his longest field goal of the year was 42 yards, and he's going to have to duplicate that effort right about now. He holds an NCAA record of 11 straight. Actually, this is going to be a 52-yarder if you add the 10 yards into the end zone, so this will be the longest one of his career as Dave Beck will hold. And it's going to be way short. So Colorado will take over the football on the 20-yard line with nine minutes, one second to go in the first quarter. The score is still Colorado and Auburn. No score. We'll be back at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville in a moment. Bank AmeriCard. Think of it as money. Money for everyday things. Money for special occasions. Money that can save you money. And money that gets you where you want to go. Bank America. It's money in a more versatile form. Hey, babe, let me borrow your shampoo. Yeah, up top. Head and shoulder. <laughs> you mean our great swing quarterback has a dandruff problem? There's no dandruff problem when you use head and shoulders regularly. Hey, great! <laughs> but what about your hair? That looks good, doesn't it? And it leaves your hair looking the way the ladies like it. Hey, so that's your secret, huh? It's no secret. Head and Shoulders is the best-selling shampoo in America. You mean not just the best-selling dandruff shampoo? Right. Back at the Gator Bowl and... Bloomville, Florida, 72,000 fans watching Auburn and Colorado battle it out for the first time in football history. It's no score. Colorado will take over the football. Auburn moved the ball well, but failed on the 52-yard field goal attempt. And now the Golden Buffaloes with Ken Johnson at quarterback. A couple of yards by Charlie Davis. Ken Burnich making the stop. Auburn's a team that makes very few mistakes. Colorado also uh, would like to lay claim to that. Big, big uh, fort, of course, is in the defense. Johnson has the ball tipped by Danny Sanspree, number 93. Got his hands on it. And go, it's an, inter, it's an incompleted pass. It was intended for J.V. Keene. Danny Sanspree, the defensive right end, made some of the All-American teams this year for Auburn. He knocked down 20 passes during the course of the season. There goes pass number 21. And 26 times he nailed ball carriers behind the line of scrimmage. J.B. Dean split out wide to the right. He's in place of uh, Elwood and Haggerty. Haggerty not playing, of course. Pass goes to Charlie Davis, but he's knocked down by number 99, Welch. Eddie Welch. 
Well diagnosed. Brings up a third down, about nine. Loss of two on the play. Check that, it's fourth down. Fourth and nine. 7.55 to go. In this first quarter, John Stearns is back, facing the sun. Johnny Simmons, the single safety man back, about the 41-yard line. Nice high spiral kick floating down at the 36. It's fumbled and fallen on at the 34-yard line by Johnny Simmons, and that's where Auburn will take over. 44-yard boot. Loss of three on the return. So with no score, we'll be back to the Gator Bowl in just a moment. But the croak, Stacones. What do I smoke? Tacones. Tacones is Hollands, a full aroma. Tacones is Dutch, a full aromatic tobacco. The Tacones makers, maken the buck. The people of Tacones have been blending tobacco. Uh, since um, 1818. Since 1818. Tacones is mild. Tacones is mild. It's van smaak. Rich tasting. Um, is verrukkelijk om te roken. Very satisfying. Wat wel blijkt bij de eerste trek. One puff tells a man that. An aroma is heerlijk voor de omgeving. The aroma, a pleasure to share. Tacones. Tacones. Oh. En jullie dachten zeker dat wij alleen maar tulpen konden maken. <laughs> and you thought we Dutch made only tulips. And from the Goodyear Blimp Mayflower, captain by Joe Hayjack, high above the Gator Bowl. A good shot of this sold out arena. The scene of battle for Auburn and Colorado this afternoon on the 34 and a half yard line. Auburn takes over, no score. Gossam is back in the lineup, number 49, going just at the top of your picture now, out of frame. So he's okay. He was holding an ice pack on his mouth earlier. Ooh, crushing tackle stops Henley. Bud Magrum, I believe it was, number 71, who really flew through there. Or was it number 70, 37? Bud was around there. You can usually predict that he will be. He made 111 tackles this past season. A Vietnam veteran who uh, was honored with a Purple Heart over there, did an 18-month tour of duty. Made some of the All-American teams this season. Henley has had five carries and minus four yards. So they go a little deeper, giving some running room to him, but still he is stopped. Rick Kay coming in, and number 85 also in on the stop. Rick Kay, number 83, had a great day in that upset earlier this season against Oklahoma. He has exceptional speed for his size, runs the 40 and 4.7, and during this last season, he got 42 tackles for the Buffaloes. Makes a third down situation. Neither team has really been able to do much except for that one run of Watley in the one pass that he completed. Auburn hasn't done anything, and Colorado has zero. There's a fumble. Fumble and recovered by Colorado. The first break of the ball game. That's the 37 yard line. Mix up that time between the quarterback and the center. The quarterback, Watley, didn't even have his hands under the center. Stu Aldrich, number 85. Defensive left tackle. Well, don't forget tomorrow night, New Year's Eve on ABC. We hope you'll join us for the party. The exciting Sugar Bowl game from New Orleans featuring the Oklahoma Sooners with Greg Pruitt against the Penn State Nittany Lions led by their senior quarterback John Huffnagel. Tomorrow night, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. First and 10, Colorado at the 37. No score. Johnson. Throws. He's got a man down there. It is incomplete. John Keyworth was there, and you saw him with the ball in his arm. Johnny Simmons was two steps behind him, and he couldn't hold it. John Keyworth, number 28, who we spotlighted in our pregame show, the wingback, came to Colorado as a running back. He has exceptionally fine speed. He's running a slant corner pattern this time off of play action. He has his man Simmons beat. But as the expression goes, hit him in a bad place, right in the hands. Here from the end zone, you get a better look at the play action. The drop back by Johnson. He sets up well, has good time to throw. Everything is apparently perfect, except for one thing. 
Ozell Collier has gone into wing back now. And on the draw, Charlie Davis has his heels clicked together by Bill, Bob Newton, number 76. Charlie hasn't been able to do very much so far. The Auburn defense is well drilled on how to stop number 26. If they do key on Charlie Davis, however, watch the fullback, Bo Matthews. Third down, about 11. No score in the game. Five minutes, 55 seconds to go in the first quarter. Colorado took the opening kickoff, had the punt. Auburn moved it pretty well, but then was stopped. Tried a 52-yard field goal. That was no good. Colorado came back. Then had to kick, then Auburn fumbled. Now Colorado has it. J.V. Kane at the sideline at the 34-yard line. Knocked out of bounds by Dave Beck. And there's a little bit of a scramble there in front of the Auburn bench. J.V. gets out of it quickly. Let's check tight end J.V. Kane, number 89, who's running up. Slant out pattern this time. He simply slants out toward the sideline, slows down, and the ball is on target from quarterback Ken Johnson. Fourth down, and that brings in Fred Lima, field goal kicker, barefooted field goal kicker from Chile. Lives in Hollywood, California now, grew up in Miami, but originally came from Chile. Kenny Johnson holding. This will be a 51 yard attempt. He has won 57 yards this year, but this one is going to be short. So each team has tried a long field goal, 152 by Auburn, another one 51 by Colorado, and Auburn will take over the football on the 20 yard line. So there's still no score, 455 to go, first quarter, back in a moment. Civilized like an elegant woman, savage like a cat. Mercury Cougar XR7, like nobody else's car. Buckets, tachometer, automatic floor shift, V8, all standard. No car combines more luxury and sportiness than Cougar XR7. It's like nobody else's car. Built better to give you more at the sign of the cat. Your indigestion and heartburn can come from two stomach problems, but most antacids treat only one, excess acid. But Digel relieves both problems, excess acid plus trapped gas. Because many doctors agree a real cause of common stomach distress is trapped gas bubbles churning with excess acid. And Digel's unique formula has patented cymethicone to eliminate distressing gas while powerful antacids neutralize excess acid. Digel, it's two kinds of medicine for two kinds of relief. Auburn has substituted a couple of new men in its backfield. Chris Linderman, a sophomore, has gone in. He's number 29. We saw him against Georgia when he scored in the second play of the game against the Bulldogs in a 47-yard run. At that time, he was replacing Terry Henley. That's what he's done right now. James Owens is in in place of Rusty Fuller at fullback. Owens, number 43. And Mike Gates and Rob Spivey are in, both tight ends. Now, Lee, that might be kind of significant, running with two tight ends instead of a wide man. Here's Watley. Barely does get back to the line of scrimmage, may even be a yard short. Running with those two tight ends, I think you can look for the blast to go both ways. Dave Orvis, there's a familiar name. The brother of Herb Orvis, who was an All-American defensive star for the Colorado Buffaloes. Second and 11. Second and 11. Ball on the 19-yard line. No score. First quarter. Watley slips the ball off to Linderman, and he gets up to about the 27-yard line. You can see how fast he is. Bunny Shufo making the stop. Picked up almost seven yards. Third down, a critical third situation. Third and three. Some indication that we haven't seen a whole lot of offense so far in this contest. Well, let's be positive. Let's say we've seen a lot of defense so far. There you go. And a lot of hard hitting. Third and three. Quick pitch to Linderman. Too bad if he'd gone outside, he might have gotten that first down. As it turns out, Cooney turns him in, and he stumbles to the ground at about the 27. Now they place it on the 26, so... Loss of a yard on the play, it's fourth down. Fourth down and four. Bud Magrum, number 71, checking back into the lineup, and David Beverly is in for 
The Tigers of Auburn, all Southeastern Conference putter, led the league as a sophomore two years ago. Deep man now, number 16, going back is Cullen Bryant, playing in place of Steve Haggerty, who is normally in that spot. Beverly sails one out of there, driving Cullen Bryant back to the 24-yard line. Boxed in, Linderman's there, down he goes. What a hit, 50 yards, and there's a marker down on the field. A marker down on the field at the 23-yard line. Two minutes, 47 seconds to go in this first quarter. A defensive struggle so far between Colorado and Auburn. Great kick by Beverly, and I think we saw some of the strength of Cullen Bryant. I want to talk more about that. Here's the mark off from the 22 back to the 11, half the distance to the goal line, which is a major penalty of holding against Colorado. Cullen Bryant is the strongest man on the Colorado team. He's a weightlifter who has built himself up from 180 to 210 and by using a weight training program, and he can bench press, believe it or not, 425 pounds. First to foul of holding against Colorado. Half the distance to the goal line. No score. 2.47 to go in the first quarter. <laughs> Number 28, going back in the backfield there, John Keyworth. There you see Bo Matthews, 41. Number 38 is Rick Elwood, who goes out to the top of the picture. Colorado has yet to make a first down on three possessions. Here's Kenny Johnson. Nice fake, throws. It is intercepted. Johnny Simmons, number 27. I thought for a moment he might have trapped the ball. There and it's Auburn's ball on the 24-yard line. Watch how close it is. He got it, and it was a beauty. We are isolated here on John Keyworth, the wingback number 28, who is down and curling in. The ball is thrown to his inside, and look at that great interception by Johnny Simmons. From the end zone, we get a better look. Sprint out pass by Johnson throwing on the move to Keyworth. What a play. All right, first and 10 for Auburn on the 24-yard line, the deepest penetration of either team so far in a scoreless deadlock. Chris Linderman thrown for a two-yard loss. Number 37 coming in there once again is Rick Stearns. Second down, about 11 yards to go. I was talking about turnovers a little bit earlier. Auburn had only 14 during the entire year. Seven on fumbles, seven on interceptions. That really is a remarkable record. And they forced some 30, 22 by interceptions, eight by fumbles, and then, they, of course, they did block two punts against Alabama. So 32 turnovers that they forced. Here's Linderman getting position outside, goes to the 20, inside the 20 to the eight, about the 19 or 18-yard line. Stu Aldrich and Rick Kay, numbers 85 and 83, making the stop. On the 19, 151 to go, first quarter. Auburn and Colorado, nothing to nothing. Third down now, and five. Coming into the lineup is Mike Gates, sophomore tight end, replacing Rob Spivey for the Auburn Tigers. Well, we've got a menagerie here today. We've got alligators, the Golden Eagle for the War Eagle. We've got Ralphie the Buffalo. Too much time? Might be. Delay of the game. Five yards and a costly five to Auburn. That's what it is. Back to the 24. So those five hard-earned yards are chalked off against them. Now, here comes Spivey back in. So Gates wasn't even in for a play. As Shook Jordan, the veteran coach, 22 seasons at Auburn, Put some information into the ball game. 69 seconds to go of the first quarter. There is no score. Watley with plenty of protection. Goes to the 16 and the 15 and goes to the 13 yard line. Short of a first down, I believe. No, they say maybe it made it. 
Randy Geis made the stop on him. Is it close enough? From the end zone, let's check First the quarterback, down. Wade Watley, number 15, who's a big, strong guy, 6'2", 215, filling in today for Randy Walls. Scrambles up the middle, plus one tackle, sheds another, and has the first down. And it was Randy Geist who made the stop, but it was just enough for the first down on the 12 and a half yard line for Auburn. Gossip comes out wide to the left. Pitch goes to Linderman. Again, Randy Geist, Bud Magrum there, number 71, forcing him out. Man was hurt on the play, lying down. Might just be a muscle spasm. It's uh, Jake Casey, number 65, a senior left guard. Sometimes that happens, uh, those muscles just tighten up and in the calf. And we may uh, see him back here in action. It just takes a moment for the trainer to work out that little tightness. We hope that's all it is. Rob Spivey checking back in the lineup for Mike Gates. Trey's Rogers has replaced Casey at guard. So across that front line, we have Cannon, Lorendo, Rogers, Taylor, Ferrier, Steele, and Gates. And now they have two tight ends in there, Spivey and Gates. Another delay of the game, or is that the quarter? No, it's the quarter. Well, that, that gives a sigh of relief to the Auburn Tigers. It's the end of the quarter, and there is no score. We'll be back in a moment. Valvoline motor oil is the choice of men who care, care the most about cars. The pros. At Indy. On drag strips. And on road race courses. More professional drivers rely on Valvoline than any other brand. You can rely on Valvoline for your car, too. It's the motor oil for the man who really cares about his car. Valvoline. A product of Ashland Oil, a growing worldwide company. One of the nicest things about getting automobile coverage from a Continental insurance agent is the special emergency number he gives you to use when he isn't around. It lets you call for quick claim service at any time of day or night, even on weekends. Dial a claim. May I help you? Yes, my wife is having an accident. Leaving your lights on for over three hours in freezing cold, that's murder. But that's what we did with these cars. Let's see if any of them can start. One can. The one with the Sears Die Hard. The Die Hard. Extra power to start your car when most batteries won't. Sold only at Sears. Bill Fleming along with Lee Groskup back at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. Here's how the first quarter went. And one thing that really stands out there, Bill, is that Auburn got 47 total yards to Colorado's three. And as you mentioned, uh, let's accentuate the positive. It's just been a very tough defensive struggle. I think the only slip that Auburn made was when uh, they let Keyworth get behind him, but he dropped the ball. Second down, 10 to go. The ball on the 12. Linderman tries to crash through and gets his nose just about to the 10-yard line, and he is forced back by Mark Cooney, number 73, and Billy Drake, number 51. Just short of the 10-yard line, but the ball, as you can see, is almost in the geometric center of the field from the sidelines. Auburn determined they're going to get at least three out of this drive after the interception. Each team having one turnover. An Auburn fumble recovered by Colorado, but they couldn't do anything with it. And now Auburn intercepted in the Colorado pass, and they still have possession. Watley looks, batted down, and number 51 coming through there was Billy Drake. So each team has batted one of the opponent's passes down before it could get airborne. Auburn going that time to that double tight end offense that we discussed earlier, play action pass. Again, a fine defensive play by the Buffaloes. Auburn ranked sixth in the nation, Colorado 13th. You'll see the number two team in the country, Oklahoma tomorrow night, against number five, Penn State, the pride of the East, in the Sugar Bowl game. That's coming up on ABC New Year's Eve. And here now is Gardner Jett, 
to try for a field goal. He missed one earlier from 52 yards. This one will be from 27 yards out. It's up and it's perfect. So Auburn Tigers have taken the lead over the favored Colorado Golden Buffaloes. It's three to nothing. We've just begun the second quarter of play, and we'll be back with more in a moment. And, uh, they're always looking for someone to take your place, but I don't think they made that fella yet. And uh, I like to compete, and I like to win, and I think that's the reason I'm still playing the game. And uh, around uh, our team, uh, they refer to me as the old man, but I know I can compete with the kids on the field, and I think I can compete with them off the field. And that's where brute comes in. It stays with you. It hangs in there. I use it. I like it. Brute by Fabergé. After shave, after shower, after anything. Is tomorrow the morning you break an old habit? When you stop to think, what good are two edges if you can only shave with one at a time? Schick puts both edges on your side. The Schick Super 2. Two super chromium edges working together for a close, comfortable shave. The Schick Super 2. It's enough to make you break an old habit. Man could really fly back there is Ozell Collier, number 23, waiting for the kick. He Auburn's can indeed. Kick will be Chris Wilson. He can indeed because he's a 9 4 sprinter in the 100 yard dash. Colorado trailing 3 to nothing by virtue of a 27 yard field goal by Gardner Jett. Short kick. Taken by Gary Campbell. He somersaults his way to about the 23-yard line. 15-yard return, and the Golden Buffaloes will go to work against the stubborn Auburn that defense. Return, uh, Gary, go ahead there. Gary Campbell, who returned that uh, kickoff, was one of the heroes of the Oklahoma upset. He that came in and replaced three. Charlie Davis momentarily in that game and got off a long touchdown run. Two men in the eye are Matthews ahead of Davis. Keyworth is out to the left. Marker down as Matthews grinds through to the 27-yard line, but they may have had a little motion there. Benny Sibley made the stop for Auburn, number 78. Bo Matthews, the fullback, is a big guy who rushed for over 700 yards and four touchdowns this last season. And with Auburn keying on Charlie Davis, don't be surprised if Bo Matthews starts getting the football. Illegal motion. So they chalk off the five yards, and Colorado has a first and 15 on the Colorado 18-yard line. During the year, Johnson only was intercepted eight times, which is a statistic that perhaps is even more revealing. How steady he was, Bob Newton making the stop on Charlie Davis. Newton, number 76, twin brother of Bill Newton, who plays at linebacker for Auburn. Ken Johnson also got over 300 yards in the rushing department, and he's a good runner. It's second down. 14 yards to go, and Colorado still trying to get on track on the offensive side, trailing three to nothing. Sansby forces the fumble and it's covered by Auburn. That's the ball, but Sansbury was the one, number 93, who really crushed him to the ball game. Let's watch Danny Sansbury, number 93, who's made some big, big plays this season for Auburn. Forces the fumble, and now the Tigers have field position. And Eddie Crowder, the coach of Colorado, stumping it on the sidelines, very upset with that one because Auburn now has the ball on the Colorado 16-yard line. Everybody moving and flags all over the place. So we'll have to wait and see exactly what happened. Uh, there were so many people moving. <laughs> While they're discussing it, let me remind you that 1973 promises to be another big year for ABC's wide world of sports. We'll begin this new year next Saturday with the Hula Bowl live uh, satellite from Hawaii. 
And I think really that's one of the most outstanding array of All-Stars ever in the history of football. Every top All-America player will be in the Hula Bowl, including the Heisman Trophy winner, Johnny Rogers. Chris Schenkel, Bud Wilkinson, and O.J. Simpson will be on hand. Then on Saturday, January the 13th, it's the exciting Harlem Globetrotters making their debut on Wide World of Sports. So we hope you'll join us for the next couple of weeks. And now with the first and 15, the penalty against Auburn. Watley, tip, incomplete. Second down, 15 to go. Part of the sellout crowd here today to watch the Auburn Tigers and the Colorado Golden Buffaloes. The score three to nothing, Auburn out in front. And now Auburn has a second and 15 on the 21-yard line. And in this obvious pass situation, their tendency has been to go to their split end. For the most part, number 44, Sandy Cannon, whose favorite routes are the curl in and the sideline. All right, they've just sent in Dan Nugent as a tight end, number 80, sophomore. Quick pitch. Here goes Henley outside, out of bounds on the 16-yard line. Gain of about five on the play. Bud Magrum doing the chasing along with Cullen Bryant. Placed on the 15 and a half. Well, a third and nine, and the strategy before was to move the ball over to the other side of the field to try to get it into good position. Let's check the pursuit of number 16, Cullen Bryant, the All-American defensive back for the Colorado Buffaloes. He knows where the football is. He intercepted seven passes this season, and he has great strength, as I pointed out earlier. Third down and nine. Gasson to the right. Watley going to pass. Throws it. Henley's got it on the three. Terry Henley falling forward to the two. To be first and goal to go for Auburn. A look from the end zone and a good play action pass. Here's the fake by Watley. Comes back. Terry Henley has circled out of the backfield now and sits down in the open area just in front of Cullen Bryant. That's a look at Cullen Bryant from a different viewpoint. First and goal to go. The ball on the two and a half yard line. Gossam sprints out wide to the left. Auburn now. Four chances to go. Two and a half yards. Henley cracks to the one. Auburn has really surprised this Colorado defense today as Billy Drake made the stop to save the touchdown. Second down. The ball exactly on the one-yard line with Auburn out in front. Three to nothing. Twelve minutes, 14 seconds to go in the first half. From the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, the first time these two teams have ever met. And Auburn has drawn first blood and now is threatening again. Watley, the sophomore quarterback, on the sneak. It's a touchdown! His first college touchdown. And he gives Auburn a 9 0 lead. Wade Watley is a 6 3. 200-pound sophomore from Tuskegee, Alabama. And now Gardner Jett will try the extra point. Dave back holding. It's perfect. And Auburn has a 10 to nothing lead over now over Colorado. And we have exactly 12 minutes to go. And that drive of 16 yards in five plays took only a minute and 20 seconds on the clock. Back in a moment. So much life to be lived So much to be tried And when you share it you get A special feeling inside It's a full-time thing The kind of life that you need A little break from it all break that you need. You deserve a break today. So get up and get away to McDonald's. You deserve a break today. So get up and get away. 
from the end zone of the Gator Bowl. You can see Collier on the goal line, and then you can see the other Colorado men deployed upfield as Colorado will get ready to receive the football after being stunned by Auburn. It's 10 to nothing. Collier has to stay deep now. He is upset at the 16-yard line. Lee Carpenter, number 41, got a knee on him. Well, that's what we gave you a moment ago. A minute and 20 seconds elapsed after Danny Sanspree forced the fumble that Eddie Welch recovered, and it didn't take long for Whatley to take him in. Watley's done quite a job so far, both his play calling, his ball handling, and also his passing, I think, has been exceptionally sharp. Colorado with two turnovers, Auburn with one, and Colorado trailing 10 to nothing. Good hole for Bo Matthews, who gets five quick ones. Bill Newton, number 56, making the stop. Number 99 there was Welch, defensive end. You know, Wade Watley was asked how he felt uh, being thrust into a situation like this, a, a pressure situation replacing Randy Walls. And I'll tell you about that right after this play. Second down, about five. Not much on that. Wade Watley said that uh, the game plan wouldn't be any different uh, with him in there or if Walls was in there. And he said the main thing, he was just going to have to go out and play some football. That's what he's done so far today. Well, that's been a good philosophy that Auburn has adopted this year after losing uh, Pat Sullivan and Terry Beasley. Sullivan, the Heisman Trophy winner, and Beasley, the All-American receiver. They knew that they didn't have any outstanding stars as such. It's been a real team effort all the way. Third down and two. Big play for the Buffs. And Ken Johnson thinks it's big enough to talk over. Calling timeout. That means that Colorado will only have two timeouts left. Auburn will have three. And now Ken goes over to talk to Eddie Crowder in his 10th year as the head football coach, former great at Oklahoma, under Bud Wilkinson as a quarterback and then as an assistant coach. He's incidentally going to be a co-coach with Frank Broyles in the Hula Bowl game coming up on ABC next Saturday. My goal as an individual to be uh, financially independent as a single woman, I uh, am very bullish on America. Jack Whitaker for Merrill Lynch. I've been asking people here in Houston if they're bullish on America. So far, most of them seem to be. But different people have different investment problems. I'm very bullish at this time. I'm retired, and uh, investment is what uh, I, I live on. My biggest financial challenge would be getting... Uh, making sure that these two girls of mine, 10 and 14, get a good education, which is, as you know, becoming more expensive all the time. Different people, all bullish on America, but with different investment problems. That's why Merrill Lynch has 29 different ways to invest, and common stock is just one of them. Ask Merrill Lynch which ways they think are best for you. Merrill Lynch, 29 ways to help you share in America's growth. Lee, it's a little bit unusual to see us, an experienced quarterback like uh, Johnson get up to the line and then call timeout with third and two. It would seem a kind of an obvious situation, but maybe it isn't because of the defense. Well, Auburn does a lot of jumping around defensively. They give you mostly a four-man look. Sometimes they only have two down linemen, and perhaps he was confused by something he saw defensively. All right, 10.52 to go in the first half, and Colorado trails 10 to nothing. Johnson kept the ball, and I believe he's short of the first down. Eddie Welch, number 99, and number 76, Bob Newton, made the stop. And Johnson on the keeper. If he makes it, it's going to be, it's going to be by a ripple of the pigskin. Colorado still hasn't made a first down. We're into the second quarter. That's remarkable. It is. By a fraction. So Ken Johnson goes back in the huddle with a first down on the 26-yard line. 10 minutes, 33 seconds to go in this first half. Great halftime. Both bands are here today, Auburn and Colorado. They've been working for four solid weeks on their halftime shows. Here's Bo Matthews for the first break of the ball game for Colorado. The longest game that they've had to the 41-yard line. A quick burst of 15 yards. And Mike Neal picked him up or he might have gone on the way. 
Bo Matthews, number 41, the big 230-pound fullback, gets a great hole on a quick-hitting trap play up the middle. He rushed for over 700 yards this last season. And as we mentioned, with Auburn keying on Charlie Davis, he may be a key man. All right, the second first down now, consecutively. Matthews is stopped for about a foot by Benny Sibley from Bluntsville, Alabama. Number 78. Might not have had that ball just exactly where he wanted it. Nobody has really been outstanding today as far as uh, statistics are concerned on the Colorado side. Auburn has defensed them well. 42 yard line, still in Colorado territory. Second down and nine. The Buffs trail 10 to nothing. On the draw, Charlie Davis gets outside. Nice pursuit. He kept shrugging him off, as you could see, but another wave had come up. And they finally ran him out of bounds with Bill Newton getting credit for the tackle. Number 56, Charlie Davis getting it to about the 43-yard line. Let's pause now for five seconds for local station identification. Third and seven. Third down, seven yards to go. Ozell Collier has gone in as the wide receiver. He's number 23, replacing John Keyword. And they go to him. Johnson looks, throws too high, and is almost intercepted. Mike Neal got his hands on it, but couldn't hold it. And that brings up a fourth down situation for Colorado. Eight minutes, 29 seconds to go in the first fourth half. Down. And the Buffaloes have continually been frustrated in this first half of play. Johnny Simmons trotting back as the single safety man as John Stearns is in to do the punting. Fourth down on the 43. Stearns gets it off of a fair catch called for by Simmons at the 21-yard line. 36-yard boot. Well, again, a reminder about tomorrow night, and we extend to you a invitation to join us here on ABC for our New Year's Eve party in the form of a great football game, the Sugar Bowl game from New Orleans with the Oklahoma Sooners with Greg Pruitt and company against Penn State's Nittany Lions. Tomorrow night, 9 o'clock Eastern time here on ABC. We can guarantee you lots of fun. The Sugar Bowl Classic in New Orleans, Oklahoma and Penn State, number two and number five in the nation. Chris Linderman is now on the backfield for Terry Henley, and he gets a couple of yards. Bud Magra making the stop. Eight minutes, 15 seconds to go in the first half. Once again, let's check number 71. Big Bud Magrum, the All-American who led his team in tackles this year, sheds a blocker and gets his shoulder pad right up in the sternum. He'll remember him. Ball on the 23 and a half yard line as Auburn leads 10 to nothing here over Colorado. Wave giving to Linderman, gets a couple of more. Wade Watley, the quarterback of Auburn, in for the injured Randy Walls, has scored a touchdown and has led his team to a 10 to nothing lead. That's a reminder here that basketball isn't very far away as the Harlem Globetrotters will make their debut on ABC's Wide World of Sports on January the 13th. Hope you'll join us two weeks from today. Of course, next week we certainly want you to be with us for the Hula Bowl game via satellite from Honolulu. Here's Linderman, first down, and he gets to the almost the 40 yard line. Warren Richardson making the stop. And Chris Linderman showing the kind of speed that he did against Georgia when he substituted for her. the injured Terry Henley and started in that game and was named the offensive player of the game. Gets it up to the 39 yard line. And again, the advantage of a double tight end offense being able to run the blast play either to the right or the left with that extra blocker. And did you see the block that Mac Lorendo, number 77? He's the second from the top of your screen on the line, the down lineman. Here's Linderman going to the other side, as you suggest, Lee, getting to the 45. 
Last left, last right. Linderman now has nine carries for 39 yards, and I would think that would make him the top ball carrier out there on the field. It's second down, about five. Auburn out in front, 10 to nothing. We're in the second quarter with 6.15 to go. Quick pitch out to Linderman. Still managed to get a couple, even though he was trapped. Brought down by Randy Geist, number 15. Gossam going back, number 49, to say something to the quarterback, Watley. Rusty Fuller, number 33, is the fullback. A 27-yard field goal. And a touchdown after recovering a fumble. That's been the difference so far, as Auburn leads 10 to nothing. Wow, there comes Stearns and hits him hard at the 47-yard line. Rick Stearns. These are young men who are from, uh, I believe, one of the outstanding uh, high school teams.
band leaves the field to that cry of War Eagle. All Auburn fans everywhere can thrill to that battle cry because they are out in front by the score of 10 to nothing. Another reminder here that tomorrow night we're going to be greeting you with black tie from the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans for the annual Sugar Bowl Classic, the first time ever on New Year's Eve, Oklahoma and Penn State. And we certainly hope you'll join us here on ABC at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 8 o'clock Central Time for that great football game between the Sooners and the Nittany Lions. Chris Schenkel, Bud Wilkinson, and I will be on hand along with all of our ABC crew, and we invite you to our New Year's Eve party then. Just to give you an idea of some of the players you'll be seeing in action, let's take a look, first of all, at the Nittany Lions of Penn State. Their senior quarterbacker is a man by the name of John Hoffnagel. And here we see him in action. Where's number 16? Throwing to Scott Skarzynski. Wide receiver. A big, strong end who can really catch the football. Now the tight end is Dan Natale. Dan wears number 84. And this is uh, Skarzynski on the second catch. Natale was the leading receiver on the Penn State team this year as the tight end. And here he is for the TD. Now for the Sooners of Oklahoma, Dave Robertson pitching it back, and of course you know who this is. Yes, sir, number 30, Greg Pruitt. Nobody in college football ever has or perhaps ever will carry a football quite as out in the open as Greg Pruitt. Here he just backs into the end zone. Seldom have we seen a player with more bursting speed. It'll be a long time before we see a runner as exciting as Greg Pruitt. And here he is again, and you'll see him tomorrow night as Oklahoma takes on Penn State at 9 o'clock Eastern Time in the Sugar Bowl Classic in New Orleans. The city of Jacksonville float is coming by here, an old stern wheeler, a steamboat that reminds us how important the steamboat was really to the city of Jacksonville here on the St. Johns River years ago. And the queen, Miss Marsha Riggs, is on the bow of the boat. And there are the ladies of her court on the sides. Maybe we'll get a good look at Marsha, the lovely queen. As the big boat goes down into the south end zone. Combined bands of Auburn and Colorado forming an A and a CU on the football field. Strangely enough, they both have the same fight song. Glory, glory, Colorado, and glory to Auburn. The Gator Bowl is being brought to you by Motorcraft, a complete line of quality automotive parts from Ford. Motorcraft helps keep you off the hook by McDonald's. You deserve a break today, so get up and get away to McDonald's by Williams Electric Shave. You'll really get a close shave, comfortable shave, when you use electric shave. And by United States Tobacco Company, importers of Borkham Riff Pipe Tobacco in three beautiful flavors from Sweden. And we'll be back after this pause for station identification. A man plans his own kidnapping on the FBI tomorrow night. Get a shot of Ralphie. We haven't seen Ralphie yet. Here he is. Well, here's Ralphie out on the field. The mascot of uh, the Buffaloes, a 900 pound buffalo. Ralphie, incidentally, is a girl. <laughs> That is the beast to uh, reduce Keith Jackson to rubble out in Boulder as we look <laughs> at the halftime stats. Auburn again having the edge in total yards, but not nearly as drastically as after that first quarter. Now 96 to 73. 
They have held on to the ball quite a bit more. Time of possession is 1720 to 1240. And in total offensive plays, however, Colorado has 39 to Auburn's 32. Mike Neal of Auburn, the captain of the team, has his option now since Colorado won the toss to begin the game. They took the ball. Auburn has its option at halftime. They take the football and so will receive it. So the Golden Buffaloes of Colorado trailing 10 to nothing to the Tigers of Auburn here. The first meeting that these two teams have ever had on the football field. For Auburn receiving the ball, this is the starting offensive line. David Langer is back along with Mike Fuller in the deep spots to receive this kick. Fuller is number 20. David Langer, who returned two block punts against Alabama for touchdowns to upset the Southeastern Conference champions, is there number 28 on the left side. Here comes the Colorado Golden Buffaloes getting ready to kick off. Again, we apologize to you for losing our picture for a portion of our second quarter here. Again, it was something we had nothing to do with and had no control over. It was simply a switching and technical problem with the phone company in New York. And uh, we apologize to you for losing our picture, but we're glad we have it back, and we hope that we can continue to have it for the rest of this ballgame. Fred Lehman will kick off. The NCAA kick scoring leader, 7.3 points per game, and you notice he has a bare foot. His kicking foot is bare as he tees up the ball. So the Colorado defense now will have to dig up that football against Auburn. As Auburn has a 10 to nothing lead, and here we go. The timekeeper has delayed the game momentarily because the scoreboard has not uh, clicked off to 15 minutes showing and uh, it's uh, simply a technical timing problem. But it's a nice mild night here in Jacksonville. The Auburn backfield, once they get moving, will be this way with Wade Watley, the quarterback. And then either uh, Lindner or Henley at the, the tailback spot. Then Rusty Fuller and Tom Gossett. Here we go. Short kick. Angling over toward the other side of the field, bounces on the 13-yard line, and Mike Fuller, number 20, gets back to the 30, goes to the 38-yard line, and he's bounced out of bounds by Fred Lima, the man who kicked the ball off. 25-yard return on that. Auburn ran mostly with a double tight end offense in the first half, and the big play was the tailback blast off tackle. First down, the ball on the 37-yard line. Auburn got all of its 10 points in the second quarter. The lead 10 to nothing. Auburn in the navy blue jerseys with the burnt orange stripes, white numerals, white headgears. No gain as Bud Magrum, number 71, the big middle guard linebacker, comes through to knock him down. And Terry Henley was the one who got no gain. Let's check uh, Terry Henley the tailback for Auburn, having a little collision with number 71, Bud Magrum, the middle guard for the Colorado Buffaloes. He did this 111 times during the regular season. Second and 10. Emmy tries to go outside, gets a couple. Back gets up to about the 42-yard line, where he's filled by number 73, Mark Cooney, who's been very much in evidence here today, along with Lauren Richardson, number 27. Auburn has been a team all year long that has capitalized on the other team's mistakes, and they certainly have done it today, taking both turnovers of Colorado and converting them into scores. One, a field goal, the other a touchdown and an extra point. Third down and five. Watley on a third down, fires complete. First down at the 46-yard line to Mike Gates, the tight end. Playing behind Rob Spivey. On the 45 yard line. Check the curl in pass by tight end Mike Gates. He lines up on the left this time, goes down 12 yards, simply curls in. Watley again, right on target. Randy Walls may have a hard time getting that job back. 
They're both sophomores, and they'll be juniors, of course, next year. They may have a real scrap for that starting quarterback role. Here's Terry Henley getting four or five quick ones. Getting down to about the 41-yard line before he stopped by Bud Magrum. Terry Henley's been held pretty much in check today. He's carried 12 times for only nine yards, but he seems to be getting on track here in the second half. Well, he's had a good replacement, too, in Chris Linderman. Terry, I don't think, has fully recovered from the injury that he suffered in the Florida game, and he's been coming back little by little each week, but he's not quite 100%. Second down, six. At the 41 of Colorado, Auburn on the move, leading 10 to nothing. Watley finds an opening, and he's hit by Colin Bryant. There's a marker down on the play at the 37-yard line. Twelve minutes, 39 seconds to go in the third quarter. Well, some great wide worlds coming up for you in the next couple of weeks. The Hula Bowl game coming up next Saturday. That'll be from Honolulu via satellite. And then the Harlem Globetrotters on Saturday, January the 13th. Let's check the work of Cullen Bryant, number 16, defensive back for the Colorado Buffaloes, who sniffs out the counter option play and gets into the backfield to make contact with Wade Watley, number 15. Official attendance for today's game, 71,114. The offside penalty costing five. It's second down and 20. At the Auburn 45, quick pitch to Henley. Chasing him there, number 73 is Cooney. And coming up to make the stop is number 64, Lenny Schufo. down about 25 to go be pretty hard to make it five out of ten here won't it but third down at 25 statistically anyway it's kind of a tough proposition 11 minutes 49 seconds to go in this third quarter and Auburn has a 10 to nothing lead over Colorado Watley back good protection nobody rushing now they close in on him from behind, he is pulled down. Good pursuit by Mark Cooney from Denver, number 73. And that brings up a fourth down situation. David Beverly going into the lineup. What a day Mark Cooney's having, number 73, who got 95 tackles for the Buffaloes during the season. He's been tough both against the run and the pass today. Going back is Cullen Bryant, number 16. Playing in place of uh, one of the injured players. Fair catch called for at the 30. So Colorado will take over the football at the 30 yard line, trailing by the score of 10 to nothing. And we'll be back for their offensive series. You know, to get the best electric shave possible, your beard should be as dry as possible. What you don't know is you've got to wet it first. And that's where William's electric shave comes in. You see, your face is loaded with moisture. And the special ingredients in electric shave dry it to set up your beard for close, easy cutting with less friction and irritation. So, to get a really close, comfortable electric shave, get a really dry beard. Wet it first. With electric shave! Last year, we split a diamond in a mercury marquee to prove how smoothly it rides. This year, we've polished mercury to a new brilliance, completely restyled it for 73, even refined its famous ride. And now Mercury is the only medium-priced car with steel-belted radial tires standard. It not only rides like a gem, it looks like one. Mercury marquee, built better to ride better. At the sign of the cat. Bill Fleming along with Lee Groskup back at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. And it'll be first and ten for the Colorado Golden Buffaloes, trailing by the score of ten to nothing. And you have to respect this Auburn defense. You know, they held Alabama scoreless in the second half. They've held Colorado scoreless in the first two quarters. That's four quarters against superior competition. Not superior to them, necessarily, but I use it only as an adjective. I think that uh, we should restate to anyone who might be joining us late that Auburn came into this game today as an 11-point underdog. 
But that's nothing new for them. They have been playing the underdog role all season. And they like it. They do. Second down, about five. Colorado trailing here, 10 to nothing in the third quarter. Ball on the 35-yard line. Johnson gives it off to Davis, and again, he is throttled. At the line of scrimmage by Bob Newton, number 76. Danny Sandsbury, number 93, getting up there. You know, I think you made a good point earlier that when Auburn lost Sullivan and Beasley, their guys realized that collectively they were going to have to hang together and that they were going to have to do it as a team, and that's what they've done this season. Can you believe that Davis has only gained three yards all day on 11 carries? Good fake by Johnson. Comes outside to the 37. Quick, quick reaction by Bill Newton and Bill Luke. Saved any further gain, makes it third down. Check that fourth down. That was a third down situation. And in this fourth down situation, remember that bad dude Stearns, number 12, the punter, has run from punt formation. Well, Colorado needs that spark right now. They need something to happen. They're trailing 10 to nothing in the third quarter, and the time keeps moving away from them. Nice high kick, forcing Langer back, lets it bounce. I don't believe it was touched by anybody. It's kind of dangerous when that ball is bouncing around down there. It was covered by Colorado. For 700 years, the Dows have sailed on monsoon winds from Asia to the east coast of Africa in search of gold, silver, and ivory. Those that made it through the storms and rough winds celebrated. Times have changed. But the legend of these waters hasn't. One captain welcomes the other, and the celebration begins. Hey, come on. It's life they're celebrating. Nobody takes it for granted out here. Nobody should anywhere. Because it's one time around for every man, and you gotta live it with all the gusto you can. When you're out of Schlitz, you're out of beer. Jack Parr tonight premieres January 8th on ABC. Sports, very happy to be back at the Gator Bowl, and here is our president of the Gator Bowl this year, Dick Stratton on the right. Auburn has 12 first downs, Colorado six, and that was another one put up by Auburn just as we went away for our commercial message there. They measured, and Auburn did have the first downs. Colorado has not been shut up this year, but well, I'll tell you, they're going to have to do some playing against this Auburn defense here. Auburn now with the ball, just beginning the fourth quarter of action for the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. 17, Colorado nothing. It was 10 to nothing at the half. Rusty Fuller gets to midfield. Brought down by Cooney and Magrum. As we look at the third quarter stats, I think we can see once again how Auburn has dominated the football game in time of possession. This is what they have done so well all this year is the ball control game. Total offensive plays, it's about even. Second down and eight. Ball at midfield. Rhett Davis, number 84, split to the left. Watley keeps it. Gets two. Randy Geis. So here's a big play for the defense of Colorado with third down and five. Wanting desperately now to stop Auburn and get the football. Again, normally a passing situation, but the 
Tigers haven't liked to throw in these situations today. Davis out wide. Larry Lyons. Watley dropped. Coming through there very quickly. Can't quite see his number. Bob Chess. And from the Goodyear blimp, high above the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, a sellout crowd of more than 71,000 fans. <laughs> and there is the blimp itself. It came up from Miami the other uh, day from the North-South game, and it gave all the people along the beaches a great thrill to see it kind of lumbering its way up. Fourth down situation, Beverly punting it down to Cullen Bryant at the 11. Gets the ball in the end zone. He just does get out of the three-yard line. Oh, Mac Lorendo, number 77, was chasing him. And he gave the fans a real thrill. 12.58 to go in the ball game. Colorado will take over the ball on the four, and they're trailing by 17 big points. Hello, New York, Sal. Hello, Chicago, Sal. Hello, L.A. Everyone in New York and Chicago is selling. Bye! Oh, oh. <laughs> I ate too fast. Give me two Alka-Seltzer. Alka-Seltzer starts to work as you drink it to settle your upset stomach. For your upset stomach and headache, take Alka-Seltzer. Some business, huh? Men, watch Joe Namath get creamed. Let not be my cream your face, so the razor won't. Let not be my cream your face, so the razor don't. The closer you shave, the more you need creamy, soothing, medicated Noxema. Let not be my cream your face, so the razor Ball on the three and a half yard line as Colorado huddles in its end zone. Good look at Kenny Johnson, the quarterback. Got a long way to go, 96 and a half yards to the Auburn goal line. Good fake. Incomplete. Keyworth had it, couldn't hold it. Gutsy call by Ken Johnson, the quarterback, who went play action pass from his own end zone. He's 8 of 15 in the passing department for uh, 87 yards. And he was trying to find his wing back, John Keyworth, who had gone down about 15 yards and run a curl-in pattern. Ozell Collier has replaced Key Keyworth coming into the lineup here right now. Colorado has lost the ball three times. And uh, two of those resulted in direct scores. Another one cost him a touchdown. Right. Very deep as Kenny Johnson throws to the sideline. That's good. That's the 21. Rick Elwood, number 38, making it. And Dave Beck forced him out of bounds. Next Saturday on ABC, you'll see the season premiere of the Professional Bowlers Tour, featuring the finals of the $65,000 San Jose Open. Great shot of the sideline cut by Elwood. Johnson out of his own end zone. a reminder about next Saturday at 2.30 Central, 4 o'clock Pacific time. Incomplete. 2.30 Eastern, 1.30 Central, 4 o'clock Pacific time. It's pretty much cut and dried now what Colorado has to do. They're trailing by 17 points so they're playing catch-up football. Ken Johnson is going to have to throw it. He's got combination patterns. He has screens. He has draws. And they do have a gadget play, Bill, that we haven't seen yet today. That's the end around by J.V. King. Well, they haven't exactly had the ideal field position at any time. They've gotten down as far as the 27. Oh! He was right out of the open, and Bill Luca took a shot at Charlie Davis and nailed it. Charlie Davis will remember this shot by linebacker Bill Luca. He's running a swing pattern. Johnson looks upfield, goes to his secondary target, which is Davis, and he gets a little kiss right here. 
Hello. <laughs> wow. Oh my. Third down and 13. Colorado trailing 17 to nothing with 12 minutes to go on the ball game. Johnson hits this one right on the sidelines. First down. Rick Elwood got it. Langer bounced him out of bounds. Well, there was there was a pressure pass of 17 yards by Ken Johnson, the quarterback, to Rick Elwood, the replacement of Haggerty, who was eliminated from play today because of a sprained ankle earlier in the week in practice. So the Buffs have new life at the 33-yard line. 11 minutes, 54 seconds to go in the ball game. Ozell Collier is put wide to the right. Big rush. Nobody there. And that's going to be intentionally drowning the pass because there wasn't anybody there. Bill Newton. Loss of down. Auburn thinks maybe Ken Johnson threw that ball away intentionally. I don't think he'd do anything like that. Well, there's the penalty. Uh, there's certainly official thought so. Loss of down. Back to the 29-yard line. Well, they did call it. Yep. Second down and 15. Roselle Collier again struts out wide to the right. 11 minutes, 48 seconds to go in the ball game. Johnson looks. It's completed. Roselle Collier gets across midfield. Brought down by Dave Beck. 22 yards. I was about to say that they're giving Ozell Collier a lot of room for his own coverage. Ken Johnson apparently saw it too because after scrambling around, he finds his fastest man on the roster, Ozell Collier. The fancy stepping after he catches that football. First down for Colorado. 11 minutes, 20 seconds to go. The screen pass and Davis falls down. Look at how you set up the screen pass. I wonder if Charlie, uh, being used to that artificial turf, may be having a little turf. It would seem so. A possibility. I'll tell you, this grass is really beautiful. Very well manicured. But there is a different feeling to it. On the 42-yard line, second down and 19 for Colorado. Ken Johnson, the quarterback. Seven minutes and 45 seconds to go, and his team is 17 points down. Incomplete. Instead of a Rick Elwood on the sidelines, Mike Neal, Dave Beck, both there covering on the play along with Ken Burnich. Uh, one of the really fine passes in the nation tomorrow night on a Huffnagel of uh, Penn State going against Colorado in the Sugar Bowl Classic on New Year's Eve from New Orleans at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. There is an important statistic, third down department, and they have another third down situation coming up now. Third and very long. Well, not a very bright situation. Third at 19. He's got his man, and it's came to the 40, but he's going to be short, and he fumbles the ball, but I believe the ball has been blown dead. It's still short of a first down by about a yard. Johnny Simmons, number 27 there, made the stop. Eight and he needed 19. Let's check J.B. Kane, who runs the curl pattern from his tight end position. He comes up about a half yard short of the first down. Well, let's make it a yard. Ten minutes to go. 17 to nothing. Colorado with the ball, but trailing. Offside, Auburn. And he's simply just a little over anxious. Number 78, the defensive tackle. So it'll be a first down for Colorado on the 35-yard line of Auburn. They still haven't been able to dent that Auburn defense on the goal line. Nine minutes, 45 seconds to go. Auburn went out. 3 to nothing on a 27-yard field goal. Then Watley sneaked for a yard after Auburn recovered a fumble and went 16 yards in five plays. And they scored in the third quarter. 
First and ten. On the 35. Johnson. Looks for Keyworth. He's got him deep. Four men down there. He drops the ball at the seven yard line. What a catch by John Keyworth. There's one of the greatest catches you'll ever see. John Keyworth is upset against Oklahoma. Comes up with, with a, a sensational one-handed catch. I don't know how he got it. He had four men around him. Let's watch him all alone. Number 28, Keyworth running what appears to be a straight fly pattern. He just goes down and looks for the open area. Comes back with the ball. Oh, what a beauty. A one-handed stab of the ball that's from the end zone. Ken Johnson scrambling out to his right. We may see it again. All right, here we go. First and goal to go for Colorado. Frustrated so far in scoring, but now with a golden opportunity. Pass going all the way back to the 17-yard line by David Langner. His progress was to the 11th. Another look at that great catch by John Keyworth to his right. Keyworth has gone down. And look at the jump. 6'4", 230 pounds, a converted tailback. Having dropped an easier one early in the first quarter. Rich to go. A four-yard loss on that play to Keane. Quick pitch goes back to Keyworth. Charlie Davis, and he's ripped to the ground by Mike Neal. From Birmingham, Alabama, a senior who's a co-captain of the team, and it's Charlie Davis who has dropped all the way back on the 18th. Charlie Davis, who could become the all-time Big 8 career rushing record holder next season, <laughs> gets shot down on this one. He's got a lot of company. That's not his tackle. Davis only has five yards for his efforts today, and he's carried the ball 13 times. Ozell Collier out wide to the left. Got Matthews and Davis back behind Johnson in the yard. Johnson throws. It is incomplete. Gets to the ground in the end zone. And Jennifer J.V. Kane now is a desperate situation for the Golden Buffaloes of Colorado. Fourth down. The ball is placed on the 16 and a half yard line. And Fred Lehman is in the lineup. Colorado hoping to salvage three for so close, but first and goal to go in the seventh. They've been forced back ten yards in three plays. From the 23, a 33-yard attempt is up, and it's good. And Colorado is finally on the scoreboard. After 15 seconds of play, they have finally scored one to go in the ballgame, and Auburn has a 14-point lead back in a moment. When 35,000 Girl Scouts in Cincinnati asked him to help their camp, Metropolitan Life Salesman Pete Pittenger went out of his way to do just that. Pete set up a group of 117 men who repaired bunks, cut new trails, and put the camp in shape. You'll like doing business with Metropolitan people like Pete Pittenger. At Metropolitan, we sell life insurance, but our business... This is the Motorcraft two-stage oil filter from Ford. This is the leading replacement filter. It filters with treated paper, while Motorcraft has two stages, rayon and cotton. In laboratory tests, Motorcraft ran twice as long, more dirt. The Motorcraft two-stage oil filter can give your car more engine protection from dirt than the paper filter. Motorcraft, from Ford, helps keep you off the hook. Well, I'm kind of glad to get this next notice. It proves that the uh, human being is needed after all with all of our great automation. Apparently our trouble in the second quarter in getting our picture was not a human error, but it was called by an automatic switching company between uh, Atlanta and Washington. But just the equipment. Glad to know that. David Langer returning the kickoff to the 31 or 32-yard line, and Auburn will take over the football at that point. Seven minutes, 25 seconds to go. 17 to 3 is the score. for the War Eagles, the Auburn Tigers. Rusty Fuller getting a yard or two at most. That last Colorado drive stalled after 80 yards. The march started at their own four. And I think one of the keys there at the last was early on a pass pattern. Johnson just couldn't get the football there. Second down and eight. 6.58 to go on the ball game. 
Ross. Let's come out and Terry Henley dropped to the ground by Mark Sands and Rick Stern. Well, this has been a very happy occasion here on this Rhino for a lot of the Auburn fans. Incidentally, next Saturday on Wide World, it'll be the hula ball game. And then the two weeks into the basketball season. Okay. Nice fake into the line. Quick handoff, getting to about the fullback. Dropped by Billy Drake. Both Terry Henley and Charlie Davis have had their troubles today. Terry Henley has carried 16 times for only four yards. Charlie Davis, 13 times for only five yards. Kind of hard to believe. David Beverly. Colorado has three timeouts left. Auburn has two. And time will become a factor, of course, as soon as Colorado gets that football. Fair catch called for, wanting to make sure is Colin Bryant at the 25. So after that 39-yard boot, Colorado at its own 25-yard line. And trailing the Tigers of Auburn, 17 to three. We'll be back with that offensive sequence in a moment. Heavy razor, light shaving instrument. This blade can get out of line, cause nicks and cuts. This one can't get out of line. Helps prevent edge, gives you less control. But the Wilkinson bonded razor is light and maneuverable, gives you more control. Each pure chromium edge is in its own shaving head with blade angle and exposure, precision set. You get more control, fewer nicks and cuts. The Wilkinson bonded razor, a better way to shave. Winchester's here. A little cigar that's a whole nother smoke. New kind of smoke that's something else. Winchester Little Cigars. New gold in taste. New filtered smoothness. Mild and light. Winchester you. Winchester something else. Well, behind one of his players there is Shook Jordan, one of the most popular men in all of college football. Head coach of Auburn, leading candidate for Coach of the Year honors. His team out in front of Colorado 17-3 after a brilliant 9-1 year in which they lost only to LSU and knocked off Alabama. And now playing defense against Colorado with 5.35 to go. Colorado 75 yards away from the goal line, incomplete. Headed for J.V. King. Just looking at that Auburn defense, you know, a lot of these fellows are back next year. David Langer, the outstanding defensive side back, is uh, only a junior. Bob Newton is back. Bill Newton, his twin brother, is back. Bill Luca, a strong side linebacker, is back, along with Kent Burnage. They lose the two defensive ends, though, Sands, Free, and Welch. That'll be hard to replace. Second and ten. Complete to Charlie Davis. Bill Luca, number 52, making the stop. Notice how quick. Charlie Davis running a little circle pattern from his tailback position, comes out of the backfield. Tries to turn on the speed here, but is unable to get outside. They're down and eight. Auburn leading 17 to three. Quick pitch to Charlie Davis. Well, he waited for that block. Fumble was recovered by Auburn. Benny Sibley, number 78. And once again, it happens. Fourth turnover. Charlie Davis, who's been having his troubles today, takes the pitch on the option play. There's a marker down, by the way. 